And welcome to Hamilton Talks. I am Larry Diani, and Hamilton Talks is your community affairs program, speaking with well-known Hamiltonians, and sometimes those who may not be as well-known, but are also moving our community forward. And today's guest is actually a repeat guest of the program, which is very rare for Hamilton Talks, uh, but this one really deserves a second look because of the progress that's been made. Let's meet, once again, Vic Djurjevic. Vic, welcome to the show. Thank you, Larry. It's great to be here with you again. And Vic, uh, just to remind folks, the last time you were on, you were talking to us about Nikola Tesla, of all people. That's correct. And what was that all about? Well, uh, Nikola <clears throat> Tesla is a great inventor. He's a genius. Uh, unfortunately, he's not well known. Uh, he's been uh, relegated to the backwoods of history, as we might say, and yet he should really be at the forefront of history. He, in fact, Tesla is referred to as the inventor of the 20th century. Uh, so much of what we have today has been built on his foundation, and some of his inventions still are the, literally the, the components of everything. You know, the whole electrical grid that we use around the world is all Nikola Tesla. So, uh, let me tell you that, that Nikola Tesla uh, may not trip off the tongue like an Edison, perhaps, um, uh, might, but uh, still very well known and extremely important because of the foundations, uh, that the scientific foundations that he laid, um, and also popularized in the last number of years. I mean, if people see Tesla, they might associate it to the electric car, and that's called exact the Tesla. Exactly, it. Uh, the Tesla motors took the name Tesla because they knew the significance and the relevance of Nikola Tesla, and as well, the most important part is that vehicle is actually powered by the Nikola Tesla induction motor that he invented in the 1880s. And in fact, you know what, I was just following one yesterday, uh, and my wife said, what car is that? And I said, that's a Tesla. I'm interviewing someone on Tesla <laughs> just today, so, so it, it is a small world. However, there's a link between Nikola Tesla, his inventions, and Hamilton, and what is that? And exactly. Hamilton was the first major city in Canada to use uh, Tesla's theories and electronic uh, uh, distribution system. Uh, the five Johns of Hamilton, uh, learned about Tesla, knew what the significance of that was, and that he had developed a whole system of AC power. Uh, and that basically relegated Edison's DC power to the history books. Uh, that's why we have DC batteries, those are Edison's. Uh, but AC, electricity, what we distribute, came to Hamilton, and that happened first in 1898 when Hamilton got that power. And in fact, Tesla, um, when he was alive, found himself in some turmoil, didn't he, as a result of some of these competitive uh, games that were being played? Constant turmoil. Uh, the biggest one uh, is referred to as the War of the Currents. Uh, that was waged between uh, Tesla uh, with Westinghouse backing and um, Edison on the other side. That went on for roughly five years until the 1893 Chicago World's Fair, where uh, Westinghouse-Tesla combination il illuminated the Chicago World's Fair, and that was the turning point of, is it AC or DC that is going to be used to harness the power of uh, Niagara Falls? And of course, it became AC, and from that point on, uh, history ch completely changed. So did Edison and Tesla know each other? Oh, extremely well. Um, In fact, they collaborated. Not point. only did they collaborate, uh, as soon as Tesla came to North America, in fact, he came to North America on the recommendation of one of Edison's employees in Europe, and he sent him to meet Edison. And the letter of introduction basically said, Mr. Edison, I know of two great men you are one and the other one standing in front of you. So uh, Tesla went to work for Edison right away uh, and in managed to perfect the problems that Edison was having, but shortly afterwards they had a falling out. Because he was strong-willed, as I'm sure Edison was as well, and each have found their way in, uh, in uh, history lore and uh, we are where we are, and not to demean 
any of Edison's inventions, but Tesla certainly deserves the prominence that you want to give him. Right. Uh, let's also mention the obvious that, that Tesla does come from uh, uh, Europe. He was born uh, in Croatia, I believe, well, it's but, of, but of Serbian uh, heritage. Exactly. Uh, Serbs uh, <laughs> around the world, uh, around that area, uh, lived in a number of regions. Uh, during the Austro-Hungarian Empire, right. that's when Tesla was <coughs> born, Serbs uh, were just on the peripheral of the Ottoman Empire there. And that became today what we call Croatia. Uh, Serbs were the fortifiers, should we say, between the Turks. And the Austro-Hungarians kind of welcomed uh, that little buffer that they had there. So, uh, you being of Serbian background, there's a little bit of pride in, in Tesla's heritage as well. Surely there must be. There, there is and a little with bit. With a good reason. There is a bit of pride, but what we're doing, this is not because beyond. Tesla. This yeah. is beyond. Tesla yeah. uh, is a man that has done so much for the world, irrespective of what he is, he is a gift to the world. And he has to be recognized for himself, not whether he is a Serbian or from Croatian area or anything like that. That it all goes by the wayside. You know, there are some uh, some individuals who transcend nationality, and I uh, and I can think of Gandhi, for example. Um, Tesla certainly would would be among them as well. Definitely, uh, for different reasons, obviously, than than uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Um, Okay, so then to honor Tesla for all of the right reasons, the link to Hamilton, we were the electric city um, at one time known as such, um, the, the electrified uh, HSR and trolleys, and now the LRT coming, I mean, we've come full circle, it's appropriate that, that we honor Tesla. But to do that, what did you want to do? Well, the first, uh, once we learned of this incredible connection to Hamilton, uh, then we realized what's important is to educate the, the youth. Uh, so we started looking how to do this. One of, the, one of the concepts was put up a statue and then kind of draw attention to Tesla that way. But at the same time, we took a look and said, we need something even more prominent than a statue. And uh, working with Bob Bertina at the time as the mayor, uh, I raised the idea, can we rename a section of Burlington Street? And he said it's possible. So of course, we went before council and uh, went along the, the long corridor uh, in the due process, and uh, city council on October the 14th uh, unanimously approved uh, renaming that section of Burlington Street that we requested. Right, so here we are in the heart of Hamilton's industrial area uh, that we call Burlington Street, uh, sometimes also called Industrial Drive, although I don't think officially named so. Uh, you wanted to rename part of the uh, roadway there uh, the Tesla Expressway initially. Correct. But then you were cautioned that maybe you should pull back on that. And of course, uh, so it, it, wasn't, it was council uh, when they were actually deliberating. Uh, planning committee approved Nikola Tesla Expressway. Uh, but uh, Sam Marula, uh, being in his ward, he recommended that drop the expressway part because people may think that they're coming it's off a, a highway and a real right. expressway. Right. So it, they, council and their wisdom, decided to change it to Boulevard, which I'm perfectly fine with. And by the way, it takes 54 years in this city to build expressways, so, <laughs> so Nikola yes. Tesla Boulevard <laughs> might be uh, much quicker and to the point, but it has a, the same effect as well. Exactly. Uh, Vic. Well, well, you know, there's a cost. Council didn't say, okay, we'll do it, because I know when we try to change the name of, of uh, actually to standardize in your old neighborhood in Stony Creek, uh, Gray's Road was known as Gray Road in one section of town and Gray's Road in another section of town, different spellings, and I just thought that was silly. And I said, why don't we just call it the same way because it's the same road? And they told me it was going to cost $10,000 to get rid of an apostrophe. Surely it would cost much more to change the name of Nikola Tesla uh, Boulevard from Burlington Street. Uh, definitely it does. Uh, and that was the interesting or the unique perspective that we took to council. We volunteered that we would pay the cost of all signage changes. And we uh, d already had an estimate from MTO coupled with the city uh, signs that had needed to be changed, the figure was uh, boiled down to as an estimate of $150,000. Right, and so I'm sure council wrote the check right away and said, here's the money, go do it, Vic. No? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, because we, we didn't ask council to right. do this. That was the important thing here. We did not ask. We said we will pay for it. This will be at a zero cost to the city. 
All right. So having been involved in local politics for 25 years, um, if I had a dollar for every person that came by, had a grandiose idea and said, and we will pay for it, it won't cost the city anything, I'd be a wealthy man today. Uh, so council believed you, they supported you, but they said go out and raise the money. Did you? Of course we did. Okay. Very quickly so, we raised so it. So let's stop there because that's the good news, is that not only did you raise it, you surpassed it, and uh, we actually have some slides uh, that put Hamilton on the map. And you actually um, uh, gave me a whole bunch of slides. I took a few of them that tell the story. Uh, and here it is. Maybe we can go through some of them, Vic. Yes, if, by if all that's means. Okay with you. So this is the first one, which was actually your cover slide, I think, or one of the one of the first ones. What is that? Well, this is where we're uh, planning to do the. Uh, sorry, this is the. This the is the first this one. is this is the first slide, right. the cover slide, which basically tells us tells the whole campaign uh, was to put Tesla on the map. And, and there's can, and there's Tesla, a, a, a real picture of him and next to 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 his motor. His that motor. that is the uh, induction motor that he developed. Okay, so we actually did cycle through them, but but okay. um, uh, so the viewers have seen some of it already. But but have a look. Yep. Right. So, so the total cost. Go ahead. The, of course, the total cost was one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars, which we agreed that we would be f paying one hundred percent of that value. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this basically lays out uh, the on the QEW because we're going to be changing not just signs in Hamilton, but we're going to be changing the image on the QEW. So on QEW, we're going to be having three signs that are Toronto bound. They will that are currently reading Nicola, um, sorry, Burlington Street. They will be re reading Nicola Tesla Boulevard. On the Niagara side bound, there are four overhead signs, and there are th three area attraction signs. So for a total of ten signs on the QEW alone. Okay. Yep. Next. Okay, and this is the the first big sign. So if where you see that Nikola Tesla, currently that was, it'll say uh, Burlington. It, it, currently Street, it right? says Burlington Street, and right. it will read Nikola Tesla. That's exactly what it'll look like. Right. So this is the next sign. As you're coming up to the exits, this shows you the those area attraction type now, signs. Now do you have to pay seeing? for that because that's advertising the province does. Is that to be paid? We for? we will be paying to replace all of those little signs at the bottom. Right. Okay. Now, now, yeah, what is this? Because okay. I thought this was interesting. Definitely. Uh, last year, uh, one of our key things, of course, of educational is to inspire the children, the youth. That's what our, we are really all about. Uh, changing the street, getting Burlington Street, that will bring the name Nikola Tesla to the forefront. But the key thing is, really is to educate the children about this. They are our future. So uh, last year we found out uh, about an area, an organization called the Bay Area Science and Engineering Fair. Right. And that was in March. At the beginning of March, we were there right away, and we uh, awarded our first Nikola Tesla Innovation Award. This year we went back, and last year we were fortunate. We found one child that had an excellent project. L this year we actually had three children. And so those were we, the three that were listed on the slide? Exactly. So those were the three, the gold, silver, and bronze that uh, won yeah, their can awards. Can we go back and have a look at uh, that slide, please, uh, Bill, in the control room? Because uh, the first one, um, the uh, the one at the top, mm. uh, if I can read it correctly, it's pre presented to Ahmed Ibrahim. Uh, no, Ahmed, uh, Ahmed Ibrahim. Yeah. And he received the gold medal. Uh, his was a brain um, interface. He was building a brain interface using some Tesla technology. And the one on the left, which I imagine the is the one on the left is uh, the one on the, the silver. Uh, sorry, the one on the left is silver. Right. That's Michael Wolf. His project was called Why Tricity on Wheels. He was actually last year's uh, only winner. Uh, he had Why Tricity only. That's transmitting electricity without wires. And then the last one, uh, so Adam McLean. Adam McLean, he is actually a child in grade seven, and he demonstrated how a generator works. A Isn't Tesla, that amazing? Tesla generator in a grade seven child, he built all little models, components of it. So what interests me, of course, is the ability that these kids have, uh, you know, the brain power that they have, uh, but also the uh, diversity represented in each of those names. Uh, exactly. And which, which really is what Hamilton is all about, what Canada is all about, right? 100% agree with you. Very good. And the next slide? Well, uh, to help raise the money, uh, we started a uh, crowdsource funding, but we did not use one of those crowdsource operations. They charge 8% for their fundraising. So we opened our own PayPal account, 
uh -huh. and we funneled all our people to go there. Mm -hmm. And we had them donate through PayPal, uh, which only takes a very small percentage compared to the other big plays, players. And then we organized two major fundraisers. Uh, that one was in Winona. Uh, Co-MCs were Bob Rettina and Maria Pearson. Isn't that great? So you had the former mayor, now, now a member of parliament, uh, and the local councillor uh, emceeing this event. Mm -hmm. And I think you had over 300 people at the no, event. This particular event had 530 people wow. at this event. Wow. It was a packed hall. We were sold out uh, almost two weeks in advance. The following week was April the 9th. We had another event in Mississauga, and that event was 330. And again, that event was sold out two weeks in advance. And of course, the Winona um, Estates uh, is on Glover Road, I believe, in, Correct. in the Stony Creek area a beautiful concept uh, as well and it hosts uh, lots of community events so very appropriate. In, in this particular case uh, I must uh, put a, a great comment in the word of thanks to them. They did this literally at their out-of-pocket cost. Wow, so, they, so they, they, they kicked back a significant amount of profit back to us so that as a donation because they, they didn't want to make profit on this event. Well, that speaks to their generosity and your uh, persuasive abilities, Victor. I think, <laughs> I think you can sell pretty well anything you put your mind to it. I wish I could. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. So as we uh, said to council uh, when I appeared in, in March, that I said we plan to be ready by April the 11th, and by April the 11th, our two major fundraisers were done. We already had $150,000 clear. And so now you've surpassed that. Yes. Uh, you're way past the, the amount that you'll need to spend on, on the signs. Uh, what are you going to do with the rest of the money? Well, uh, first of all, the, the estimate for the sign, we're gonna, we might be able to even save a little bit there if we work it out right. Uh, but we have 150 as our estimate, Clear donations was $175,000. Profit from our events that we did as fundraisers netted us close to 30000 on top of that. So we have roughly $50,000 in excess. And that Over is and all above the expenses that, that you'll and need. And that is all going to be uh, geared back towards awards and scholarships for children. One of the, the concepts we're looking at to see if we can possibly implement this quickly enough, we would like to award a Nikola Tesla award in every grade 8 class in Hamilton. Okay, uh, there is uh, 62 public schools, for example, that have a grade eight class. So as part of their graduation, kids receive all kinds of awards. We would like to give an award there for a child that thinks a l in scientific terms a little bit, but outside of the box. They don't necessarily just do exactly as, as uh, their teachers point out to them, but they think a little bit beyond. They think different. Uh, exactly. uh, that uh, Apple in a, computer and Steve exactly. uh, Jobs uh, 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 perfected when he relaunched his company again. Uh, very, very good. And of course, putting your faith in kids yields rewards immediately and down the line as well. Definitely, right? yeah. extremely, extremely. So, so, so there is a uh, um, the Nikola Tesla Educational Corporation. Um, I mean, I don't see that stopping. I mean, because it's going to be a, a perpetual sort of quest for sponsorship dollars because you'll have kids in schools uh, every year, right? Exactly. This this whole concept is uh, perpetual. Uh, I probably will not be the president of this corporation forever. Somebody else will take over the mantle in, at some point in the future. Uh, but the whole concept is let us educate the children. Let us inspire them. They are the ones that are going to lead to a lot of other things. And so we were going to be constantly running some kind of fundraiser events and other things to raise the money and take that money and put it right back in. We have a very, very minimal administration fee. Like I think out of, out of all of this money that we've raised, I don't think we spend more than three to four thousand dollars on administration, yeah. which is next to nothing. Producing um, yeah. you have the materials you need and so on. I think we've got a couple more slides and then we'll, we'll talk a little more about that yeah, story. So, council decision of October 14th, 2015 will become a reality by that date, July the 10th of this year. Correct. Of why July the 10th? Is there a significance? Yes, there, there is a big significance. That would be Tesla's 160th birthday. Wow. So He's 160. He would be 160 if he was alive. He, he lived till 86. Day or 30 in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> what a great, uh, well, uh, how appropriate is that? That's, right? that's yeah. Commemorate his birthday with, uh, with that. Can we just go back to that slide for one more second? Um, there is. Uh, there we go. Um, so, 
uh, Hamilton City Council approved this section of the road. It'll. Are you going to have some sort of a ceremony? Uh, yes. What's going to happen? And that's what we're working on right now. Uh, we want to close part of Burlington Street, mm -hmm. the part uh, where the sign is is our, so that we have. So a, where exactly on Burlington Street is it? Well, the the part that we're renaming is from the QEW, so the off ramps. Right. Those are formerly right now Burlington Street, and then you get close to Parkdale, and then okay. you got the upper level and the lower level. So we're taking the upper level there, uh, all the way to almost to Ottawa Street. Okay. And that's the only that's only that section. It's only it's about a four kilometer section of. And roadway. it's the upper level of. Correct. Of that. And the lower level still remains uh, right. Burlington Street, and this will help also emergency services. Uh, countless times they've they've questioned: Do they go to the upper level or the lower level when they get an emergency? Because people are not descriptive. Now you will not have two. Burlington Street, you really have one. One's a lower and one's an upper, and it's very easy. Okay, a couple more slides. Okay. There it is. So now um, there's that check, $150,000, and you brought a, a photocopy of it as well. Uh, now, you gave that money to the city of Hamilton? No, this is a ceremonial check, uh, right. basically telling him we do have the money, the money is okay. ready. We're working with the province through MTO. Uh, they will dictate how uh, the money will be transferred to them. And we're working with the city for their component, whatever their costs are. So we will be actually divvying the money into two separate pots. Okay. And the next slide. So you're making a request um, to Hamilton City Council. And go ahead. Well, we uh, pointed out that uh, with what uh, Tesla has done for this city and what we hope to do with Tesla for this city, that it would be quite fitting that we uh, proclaim July the 10th, his birthday, to be Nikola Tesla Day for for the city of Hamilton, and uh, council will be looking into that. Yeah, there there is a um, uh, there was a problem with proclamations of days um, became controversial one time many many years ago. I think it goes back to the days when uh, Mayor Morrow was uh, the head of council, and and so cities not only in Hamilton but in most places got away from proclaiming days because people wanted sometimes days proclaimed that were controversial in nature, so they just said, we're going to stop proclaiming. I hope they can find a way around that. Well, I've got one council person that indicated to me I will be working on that. So Perfect. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see what council does with it. Right. Well, in some way, they'll designate the day, whether it's a, an official proclamation or not. I'm sure they'll, they'll designate it as a special day. And a couple of, there we go. That's Mr. Tesla. How old would he have been there? There, he would have been in his, uh, I would say, late 30s. Yeah, in his 30s. He looks uh, to be very intense-looking gentleman. And there he is, uh, time uh, uh, dedicated a, uh, uh, an addition to the war between, and that's Thomas Edison, of course, on the left, right. and Nikola Tesla as well. When, when was that? I don't think I saw that. Well, uh, I'm not sure the exact date of that addition. That was... Uh, uh, after Tesla had passed away. After he so they've, they've, there has been a two or three editions of the Time magazine that was dedicated to Tesla. To, to Tesla himself, yeah. uh, being as yeah. important as he was. Yeah. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, your, your catchphrase put uh, Tesla on the map, uh, literally and, and figuratively, and, and thereby putting Hamilton on the map. And that's a great picture, actually, because it not only shows what you're doing in terms of the renaming of, of signs, but there's a whole grid, the electricity grid, uh, that, that's behind that. So that was not accidental, was it? Uh, no, it, to be honest with you, uh, when we, we identified the street, then we started looking at it, what are all the significances of it? First, uh, it was the industrial sec section of the city that prospered the most. So this road takes you right into the heart of the industrial zone. That's number one. And number two, as you said, the towers are right there. Uh, so yes, each for those who understand really what Tesla is and the electrical grid, each tower is really like a monument to him. So those towers clearly are taking power right in. It, just by the road where those towers are leading into is the transfer station. And that into that transfer station that's right next to on the corner of Strathern in, in Burlington, there is another line that feeds that transfer station. That is the original line along Strathern that fed power to Hamilton in 1898. Wow. So there's a lot of significant symbolism to, there, to that so, specific So did street. you, Vic, now your background's in accounting, 
isn't it? Yes, it is. You worked for the Canada <laughs> Revenue Agency. <laughs> yes, I retired did. Retired from there. Yes. You're doing some freelancing now and some volunteering, obviously, as in this case, but also some consulting in that field. But you seem so knowledgeable about the science of this. How did that spark your interest? Uh, I guess it, it sparked my interest as a, as a youth teenager. I, I learned about Tesla. Probably I learned because of the fact of that Serbian connection. Uh, but it was interesting. It wasn't taught in school. Mm. And that's what's really surprising. And over time, you just developed, uh, you know, years and years, you learn it. Uh, you learn more and more about it. Uh, still, uh, compared to the true technical people, I really don't have the technical knowledge of Tesla's uh, the inventions. I know what they are, but how do they physically and actively work? I'm not an engineer, so I don't know. Right, that. indeed. But you've got, to, even as a layperson, you've got a lot more knowledge than the average layperson would. I, well. I would yeah. tend to agree with you yeah. on that. And, and have you been to schools talking about Tesla in schools, or do you send others to do that? Well, uh, depending what the situation is, uh, we had a request to, to speak to schools, to a particular school in Kitchener. And I didn't have that time because it was actually coinciding with our fundraiser in, in uh, Mississauga. So I sent an engineer, uh, an electrical engineer, and the, the man just loved it. He says, this is the best. He goes, I've talked before, this is the best. Other stuff, I've gone in uh, to Glendale. One of the, chi the recipients of the Nikola Tesla Innovation Award comes from Glendale Secondary School. So we were in school. To, to make the announcement in school that he won the Nikola Tesla Isn't gold medal. Isn't that great? Yeah. And of course, uh, you're accepting donations even as we speak. You have a, a website, uh, www.teslaeducational.ca. Correct. Uh, where, and slash donations, uh, where people can still make donations towards this Definitely. worthy cause. And as we head towards July the 10th, I'm sure we'll be hearing about this in the paper uh, a lot more, but uh, you will continually update the community and uh, maybe uh, uh, make visits to media such as you're doing here as well in the years to come. Definitely. July the 10th will be the, the ribbon cutting. That picture that we saw with the red and white like a ribbon across, uh, that's where if we get the go ahead from uh, MTO, uh, city staff have already accepted it, but we need to go through MTO because it involves the exit of off of QEW. So if we get that go ahead, that's where the ribbon cutting will be on July the 10th. And then after the ribbon cutting, we're going to be going over to the Van Wagner Beach Strip mm -hmm. uh, between Lakeland and Hutchins, right. where we're going to be setting up a barbecue area and uh, promoting Tesla there. Where that wonderful city structure is. Yep. Um, yeah, and, and how appropriate is that? Well, listen, good work. Um, you were here just a few months ago. Uh, with the grandiose uh, ambitions and uh, and dreams, and uh, uh, we wished you luck. But uh, I'm telling you, I, I because of my experience, wondered whether you'd meet your goal or how long it would take you to meet your goal. Uh, but I shouldn't have been surprised that you, Victor Javich, of whom I've known for some years, uh, when you set your mind to it, you'll wait it out, uh, but you get things accomplished. So congratulations and keep up the good work. And I must add, Larry, this isn't all me. This is this is a whole team of people. <clears throat> Uh, my co-directors and everybody getting together and working together. That's the, the beauty of this whole thing, is the community was rallied together and be, people literally rolled up their sleeves and got to work. But every team needs a leader and I suspect we're talking to one. We have been in conversation with Vic uh, Djurjevic of the Nikola Tesla Educational Corporation, renaming part of Burlington Street after Nikola Tesla. Join us next week when we'll be talking to another Hamiltonian about important things happening in our community. See you then.